Known by some cultures as the mushroom of immortality, a reishi mushroom has been used for thousands of years to increase vitality, support immune function, support cardiovascular health, and promote longevity. But does it live up to its reputation? To find out, we've combed through the history and the science of reishi and put together this video to help you learn everything you need to know about this fascinating mushroom. We're gonna talk about what it is, how it grows, how it's used, and of course, what functional benefits it might provide. We're gonna go through a lot of information in this video, so I've broken it down into chapters which you can navigate by checking out the description. Also, if you want a full text version of this guide that includes older references, plus a lot more information that we couldn't cram into this video, uh, head over to our website. There's a full-on guide that you can read through if you want to dig a lot deeper. So without further ado, let's jump into the video and learn about this fascinating mushroom. So Ganoderma lucidum, commonly known as reishi, is a beautiful specimen among fungi. Also known as the spirit mushroom in China, or the mushroom of immortality in Japan, reishi has long been known for its powerful medicinal properties. In traditional Chinese medicine, reishi is part of a select group of foods and herbs that is considered to be some of the most powerful for improving strength, health, and longevity. The classics of the Materia Medica, written in the Eastern Han Dynasty thousands of years ago, actually references this mushroom, and it's still listed in the state pharmacopoeia of the People's Republic of China as a remedy for several conditions. Ganoderma lucidum isn't the only species of reishi, there's lots of other types of Ganoderma that grow in the wild and are even cultivated. Although Ganoderma lucidum is the main species that's grown for supplemental purposes and the main species that research is being done on, there's more research being done all the time on some of these other species of Ganoderma and starting to reveal some beneficial properties as well. This giant thing that's mounted on the wall behind me in a lot of our videos is actually the fruiting body of a reishi mushroom. Now they don't typically grow this big in the wild and they're not typically cultivated this big either. More commonly, they're about this size. Now this is the size of a reishi mushroom that's grown for the purposes of supplementation. You may notice that it doesn't have the typical cap and stem look of a mushroom. Instead, it forms this big, round, beautiful conch. Um, a reishi mushroom starts off as little, little tiny finger-like projections which eventually spread out to form this uh, big beautiful shape that you see here. Now reishi is a polypore mushroom which means it has pores on its underside that disperses its spores instead of gills. And the spores are actually super important but we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. You may also notice that reishi has this shiny surface and it almost looks like it's varnished. Actually the common name for reishi mushroom is sometimes the varnished conch. Um, but this shiny look is actually natural, and that's where reishi gets its name, Ganoderma lucidum, with gano meaning shiny and derma meaning skin, aka shiny skin. Now you may have noticed that this one isn't as shiny, it's quite a bit dull, and that's because as the mushroom ages, especially as spores line on the surface and as it dries, of course, it loses some of that shine. Now when reishi grows in the wild, it grows between May and the autumn, it will grow on dead or decaying logs, and it often grows instead of you know, straight up like this, it will grow kind of more in a, uh, a shelf type shape where it grows out and not up. And even though reishi does grow in the wild, most reishi that's used for supplementation is actually cultivated, whether it be on natural logs outside in shade houses and greenhouses, or on synthetic logs or fruiting blocks indoors in controlled conditions. So we're here at a reishi mushroom farm deep in the mountains. And the first thing you notice when you walk in here is how hot and humid it is. It just feels perfect for growing reishi mushrooms. And that's because of the shade house above me and the greenhouse is where the actual reishi mushrooms are grown. And they're not grown like the typical fruiting blocks. They're actually grown on logs, real logs that are inoculated and colonized and buried underground. And these logs take a long time to colonize. The whole process um, for growing and fruiting reishi mushrooms um, is up to nine months before you'll actually see a reishi mushroom fruiting body. But after a number of months, once the mushroom has fully grown, it can be harvested and prepared in a variety of different ways for supplemental purposes. So you might be wondering, what is the point of growing reishi? What makes it different from the bazillion other mushrooms that are growing in the forest? The magic of the mushroom comes from compounds that are locked inside the cell walls of the mushrooms. These are beta-glucans, triterpenes, and sterols. Beta-glucans or fungal beta-glucans are found in really high levels inside the reishi mushroom fruiting body. 
They are a type of water-soluble complex carbohydrates called polysaccharides that also function as fermentable fiber, meaning they survive digestion and are broken down by gut microbes in the colon. Beta-glucans have a complex molecular structure. They're all shaped in different ways, which is one of the reasons why different beta-glucans found across the fungal kingdom can have all sorts of different effects on the human body. It's possible that the medicinal potency can actually be directly related to the complexity of these molecules. The other compound is triterpenes, which are not water-soluble. They're actually fat-soluble, and they need to be extracted with alcohol in order to make them bioavailable. Available. One of these triterpenes, ganoderic acid, is one of the main triterpenoids found in reishi and is actually responsible for reishi's bitter flavor. So far, research has uncovered over a hundred of these different triterpenes in reishi alone, 50 of which are not found in any other species of mushroom. These complex molecules come in various types and have various different functions. Specific ganoderic acids like ganoderic acid A have been associated with different beneficial activities. Finally, we have sterols. Now, reishi produces numerous sterols, including ergosterol, which is the precursor to vitamin D. For reishi, this diverse sterol content is still being researched for its effects on human health. Getting these compounds out and making them usable is not actually that easy. If you were to somehow manage to just eat a bunch of reishi mushroom, it probably wouldn't do you all that much good. That's because many of the beneficial compounds of reishi mushroom are locked inside of the cell walls and need to be pulled out via either hot water or alcohol extraction. Now on a commercial scale, this means taking dried fruiting bodies, turning them into a fine powder, then performing either a hot water extraction or an alcohol extraction by soaking them in large vats of liquid and then spray drying them into a fine powder. When done on a small scale at home, this usually involves steeping pieces of reishi in hot water for a number, number of hours, like making a tea, or by soaking them in alcohol to make a tincture. Reishi's reported health benefits are pretty darn impressive for a humble mushroom, and that's why it's one of the most commonly used medicinal mushrooms in the whole world. Of course, research into these health benefits is being done more and more all the time as scientists are trying to discover the actual mechanisms of action that make Ganoderma lucidum so powerful. So let's go through some of those most studied and reported health benefits here. It's not a complete list. Again, if you want to see the complete list, you can head over to the full guide on the website, but we're going to cover some of the most important ones. Now, first off is this this mushroom's ability to stimulate and regulate the immune system. That's why reishi mushroom is known as an immunomodulator. These effects are some of the most cited and most celebrated properties of this mushroom and thought to be the core foundation for some of reishi's other benefits. Studies show that reishi may support the immune system by affecting white blood cell genes to increase production of natural killer cells, by increasing T cell and B cell counts to strengthen cell mediated immunity and improve antibody responses. Now this is just a short snippet of some of the research that has been done with the immune system and reishi mushroom. Now supporting the immune system isn't unique to reishi. Almost all medicinal mushrooms have this property because of the fungal beta-glucans that are contained within the fruiting body of the mushroom. Reishi has also been studied for its potential to reduce inflammation. Now, inflammation gets a bad rap, but it's actually a beneficial process. When an injury occurs or when pathogens invade, the body actually sends out a bunch of immune cells to help address the problem. The resulting inflammatory cascade can cause problems like swelling, redness, and pain. Now, this process is supposed to stop once the trigger is taken care of. When it doesn't, a chronic inflammatory reaction develops. The resulting damage appears to play a role in a significant number of chronic and age-related conditions. One animal study showed a specific protein from reishi can actually help modulate the immune system's response by increasing anti-inflammatory cytokine and regulatory T cell production. Some other studies show that terpenes may also have anti-inflammatory effects. However, not all reishi research actually agrees on these benefits. One study on healthy subjects receiving commercially prepared reishi capsules showed no changes in biomarkers related to inflammation. Of course, it is possible that some of these conflicts exist because of the different preparation methods of reishi or the different sources of reishi, which would have a difference in the beneficial compounds contained therein, which could have different effects. Another commonly reported benefit of reishi is that it promotes cardiovascular health or heart health. 
Of course, any weapon that can be used against heart disease is definitely worth investigating and research has been done, although it does have some mixed results. According to a variety of different studies, we see that reishi may positively affect blood lipid levels, although results may differ for people with other chronic conditions like diabetes. Antioxidant activity could reduce or prevent lipid peroxidation, which is the first step in plaque formation. Taking reishi mushrooms could favorably influence blood pressure, and reishi has the potential to prevent heart damage from chronic disease and unhealthy lifestyle factors. Another common reason why people use reishi is for helping with sleep, which is super important, obviously, and most people don't really get enough quality sleep. Now, how could reishi help with sleep? Well, reishi has a high concentration of triterpenes, which are known to have a sedative effect. Therefore, reishi mushroom might help with making it easier to fall asleep, uh, might help with improving sleep quality overall, and providing the body with more opportunities for repair and recovery. Now this is one of the reasons why so many people swear by using reishi for this purpose and a lot of people will even use reishi tea before bed to help improve sleep and improve sleep cycles. Now kind of related to sleep is reishi's potential ability to reduce stress or to help with stress. Animal studies have been done that actually suggest potential antidepressant activity which in turn may reduce or protect against symptoms of anxiety. One study on breast cancer patients showed that those receiving a reishi mushroom spore powder reported less anxiety and depression and a better quality of life. This suggests additional benefits of reishi mushrooms with those struggling with mood or mental well-being. We've talked a lot about the fruiting body of the mushroom, but reishi is actually pretty special in the fact that it's not just the fruiting body that has the benefit. Reishi mushrooms produce a ton of spores as they're growing, billions and billions of spores, which can actually be collected, extracted, and used for medicinal purposes. Similar to the fruiting body, these spores are packed with beta-glucans, triterpenes, ganocerearic acids, and ganoderic acids. Scientists are continuing to look at these spores and analyze and extract different compounds to see what different benefits they might have. You might be wondering how these spores are actually collected because when you go outside in the woods and you see mushrooms growing, the spores are just kind of dispersed into the air and it would be pretty hard to capture them. But when reishi mushrooms are being cultivated in uh, greenhouses, they produce billions and billions and billions of these spores and a lot of the times it will just settle on top of the fruiting body but what's often done is cardboard tubes are put around the fruiting body as it's grown and they can collect the spores that way before they harvest the actual fruiting body of the mushroom. To get the benefits out of the spores they need to be cracked and this is done by using methods like fermentation, ultrasound or fine milling. Cracked spores can be made into a powder or they can even be processed further to make spore oil. Although spores have all of these great benefits, low extraction rates typically translate into much higher prices, making them a lot less accessible than fruiting body extracts. So here I am in the kitchen, but this is actually a place where you won't often find reishi mushroom. That's because it's hard as wood and it tastes really bitter. The one thing you can do at home, however, is make a tea, which basically involves just tearing up or cutting up a bunch of slices of reishi mushroom fruiting body, putting it in a pot of water, warm water, and simmering it for a number of hours, which gives it enough time to actually pull out some of those beneficial water-soluble compounds. Personally, I actually kind of like reishi tea, although it's not for everyone. Other than making a tea, the most common way to use reishi is typically in powder form, whether that be in capsules or in bulk powder, or through using a tincture. In terms of dose, a typical dose of reishi mushroom ranges between 500 milligrams to 2000 milligrams of extract powder, but that's gonna vary greatly depending on the type of extraction method used in the powder that you're using. Now, it shouldn't really matter what time of day you use reishi mushroom because as with most mushrooms, the benefits are not acute but are seen over longer periods of time. That being said, since some people find it does have a relaxing effect, many people like to take it at night. The bottom line is, as with most natural products, if you wanna see the benefits, you really do need to use it consistently over time. Regular use of this mushroom may help users feel more relaxed, get better rest, get sick less often, have fewer allergy symptoms, and feel more emotionally balanced. 
Of course, reishi mushroom might not be for everyone. As with any natural product, it could have some interactions or contraindications. Best bet, if you are at all worried about it, taking other medications or supplements, are pregnant or nursing, or have any other medical condition, it's best to check with a doctor or a natural healthcare practitioner before taking any natural supplement, including reishi. Now, there are a bazillion different reishi mushroom supplements on the market, so unless you grow it and extract it yourself, it can be really hard to know what to trust. Also, believe it or not, not all reishi mushroom supplements actually contain what's listed on the label. According to one study, up to uh, three quarters of reishi supplements tested didn't contain any reishi or the compounds that you'd expect to find in them that would give them the beneficial effects. There are also a lot of supplements on the market that are made from myceliated grain instead of actual reishi mushroom fruiting body. Now, these myceliated grain supplements will contain mostly grain starch uh, from rice or oats, even though they are labeled as reishi mushroom. If you want a quality reishi mushroom supplement, you should at least look for something that is made from whole fruiting body, is thoroughly extracted, preferably dual extracted, and is organic. There are a lot of options on the market, you just need to find the best one for you and find one that you can trust. So that's it for this video guide. I really hope that it provided what you wanted to know about this powerful mushroom. Of course, if I missed anything that you wanted to talk about, feel free to let me know in the comments below, or you can uh, head over to the, the guide on the website, which has a lot more information and it goes a lot more in depth with a lot of links to the references that we use to put this video guide together. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tony from freshcap.com and we'll see you in the next video.